Welcome to uh, this video on Unity 3D C Sharp. This is Lesson 15. Uh, this is on monster creation. And what I have here, I've got a program uh, already. We're right here. And this is on a monster that I'm making. And the monster in my game needs some information. First of all, the monster needs an age. And so here's his age. He's 120 years old. He needs a health, and he, this guy's pretty healthy, and he's got a health of 320. And he needs a name, and we've named him Gorky, and he needs a race, and his race, he's an orc. But I have only have a few of the things that we know need to know about this particular monster, Gorky. You know, I need to know his intelligence, I need to know his stamina, and for all of those of us that are serious gamers, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I need to know about my monster. So that's stuff we need to know about, just one monster. There's also things that I want to be able to do about that monster. With here, I'd like to print his race. I'd like to see his name. I'd like to see his age, and I'd like to see his health. I'd like to be able to do this in the game. I don't want to have my players go into code and look in, look in the code and say, oh, this is Gorky and he's an orc. And so, I've created a separate function called monster data that does this for Gorky. And then I call that function <clears throat> from start monster data. That's where I call it from. So let's have a look at it and see what it does for me. So I come here and I, I come to the main camera and there's my monster script. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and run it and play it, see what happens. And there he is. The race is an orc. His name is Gorky. His age is 120. And his health is uh, 320. All right, that's fine. But supposing, let me come back to this, supposing I've got more than one monster. Supposing I have a game where I have 100 monsters or 200 monsters. i got a really cool game. Are you telling me that for each and every monster I have to make a separate function? I have to make another function called monster data 2 that has the stuff in for the other monster, for monster number 2, and then monster data 3 for the third monster, and pretty soon I'll be up to monster data 250, and i got to write this again. That's insanity. That is just insane programming. And that's the reason, folks, that we use object-oriented programming. And if you want to get serious about making games, and I sure hope you do, you really need to know and understand object-oriented programming. Okay, there might be another way of doing this that's a little bit easier. Let's have a look at it. Let's go to this right here and, and go, whoa, what's happening here? Okay, this is from the stuff that we had in the previous lesson. This is using the argument in order to pass parameters uh, to do stuff. Like, for example, here's monster data right here. All right, let's go and look at the function monster data. It has a parameter list, the, the age, the health, the name, and the race. Okay? And so this is going to print the race is whatever race was passed in. This is going to print the name. This is going to print the age. This is going to print the health. So what I've done is I've passed in values. I'm using the same function over and over again. I'm not writing a new function for each and every monster. But what I am doing is, here's three different monsters, and for every new monster that I have, I'm passing in a parameter list. Uh, and it, each monster now is using the same function. This is reuse of coding. This is a step towards object-oriented programming. It's not quite there yet. Let's just see how this works. Okay, so I'll come up here. And I'll click on this, and I'll come here to my camera. That's where I had it. And I'm going to remove the old script from there. And I'm going to put the new script, which is my monster 2, onto the camera. And then let's try this one to see what happens, right? And wang, there they are. There's all of them right there on my left panel. And there's the orc, Gorky, age 120, health. And there's a zombie, and who's Minky, age is 45, health 120. And there's a spider, his name is Tiny, his age is 12, and his health is 48. Okay, that's okay, but let's see what the issue with this is. The issue with this with the monster data 
let's just look at health. Here's health for each one of them. In the game, while I'm playing the game, if I'm fighting any of these guys or they're fighting each other, the game has got to change their health. Well, to have this in a parameter list, it's pretty awkward to change that while the game's running. It's hard to change some of those. And supposing I don't want supposing I don't want the player to be able to go in and change the health in in the game. I mean, change the uh, change the age. That has to be changed automatically. But I want to protect that so the player can't change it. And then of course there's the level of the monster. So this is a step in reusing the code, but it's not quite there yet. So this is really one of the major reasons for object-oriented programming because it could not only deal with monsters, but it could deal with multiple players in a massive multiplayer online game where I've got thousands of players and I need to keep information about those players. But yet the information must be dynamic. It must be able to be changed and updated and made current and that kind of stuff. And it could be about objects that I'm carrying in my backpack. Uh, I could have all kinds of objects and each of these objects has has different properties. I might have a, a good sword, a bad sword, a rusty sword, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's where we're going to be going uh, with this object-oriented programming. And hopefully now you see one of the major reasons as to why we use object-oriented programming. Okay, so uh, in the next video, I'll show you how to get started with object-oriented programming and help you become a first-class serious programmer. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.